Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon. We haven't done anything with bloggers in a while, and I I did a longer video for the Leather Journey, but um, I do have two channels, and since Whips in the Dungeon deals with all different classes of whips, then I thought, well, we should do something with bloggers for this channel as well. Um, I just want to talk just about handholds. We haven't really talked about handholds except when we are talking about single tails, well, what about handholds for floggers? Let's go over some of that. Um, traditionally, a, a well-made flogger is balanced behind the pineapple knot. And that ideally is the grass point uh, where it's gonna cause the least amount of wear and tear on your arm. For those of you out there in YouTube land that know me, uh, you know I popped the long bicep in my dominant arm or my preferred throwing arm and I have a torn rotator cuff. So wear and tear on this arm is a little more sensitive to me than it might be for someone that doesn't have an injured arm or hasn't had a, a past injury. So when you watch me flog in the dungeon, you're going to see me 90% of the time grab the flogger at the balance point and throw it with just a handshake hold because that's the least wear and tear on my arm. Are there other grips and other things you can do with a flogger? Sure, and let's cover some of those. Some people like to grab their flogger and point their index finger and use that uh, kind of as a way to aim the flogger. I teach against that grip when we're throwing single tail because single tail has a little more wrist and pointing your finger when you're throwing with your wrist limits your range of motion. But with a flogger, we're throwing a flogger with more arm motion and that limitation's not there. So if, if this is comfortable for you uh, and you're throwing your flogger, then by all means point your finger. The Australians throw a stock whip and a bull whip with what I call a thumb push. Could you grab your flogger with a thumb push and throw it with a thumb push? The thumb push is actually extremely comfortable on the backhand side, and that's actually what you're using when you do a bow and arrow. Uh, most people are doing a thumb push with a bow and arrow. So the bow and arrow comes off of the backhand side. You could bring it around and throw a bow and arrow off the forehand side. I'm a little old and stiff. It's a little difficult for me, but it could be done. But generally speaking, the bow and arrow is going to originate on the backhand side, and it's a thumb push. So when you're throwing dynamically, at least the backhand side feels comfortable with the thumb push. When you roll it over on the forehand side, you have to turn your hand and your palm around to be able to throw it with a thumb push. But you certainly can do that. That's a different, different throw, a little bit different sensation for the bottom. So we've got handshake, we've got finger point, we've got thumb push. What else can we do? Well, one real popular style of flogger is what's called a finger flogger. And the tails are mounted on a swivel with two pieces of leather that slip over your fingers. You slip your fingers through the leather and you throw your tails just with a finger hold. Could I use that type of grip on a handled, traditional handled flogger? Sure. You just take your fingers, whether it's your index finger, middle finger, slip it behind the heel knot and throw your flogger. Now, if you're not used to throwing a flogger that way, you might at first end up with some blisters or abrasions on the inside of your fingers, but over time, you'll, get, you'll develop calluses. You could do that between the middle and the ring finger. That's not quite as comfortable for me uh, as this grip, but you could use the spot type grip and, and throw that way. Another grip is just to grab the handle of the flogger with the, uh, the Turk's head up uh, or heel knot or pommel, whatever you want, you're calling it today, and throw your forward figure eight that way. 
you can throw your horizontal that way. Uh, but we're going to go back to this Ford figure eight. Okay, that's not going to create much of a different sensation than if you're throwing it with a handshake hold on the receiving end, but it's quite a different motion for, uh, for the top, which is going to change things up a bit for you. It's going to reduce the amount of, uh, of wear and tear on your arm because you're able to change your arm pattern and it's not so repetitive. And it's a prelude to throwing a double-ended flogger, which we haven't gotten to yet much. But a double-ended flogger has the handle in the middle and a tail on one side and a tail on the other side. And just for nomenclature, I call the, these the leading tails and the tails coming off the heel of your hand, the trailing tails. So when you're holding a traditional flogger with the Turk's head up and you're throwing it thusly, you're getting that sensation of the tails coming off the heel of your hand, like they're, they're the trailing tails, okay? So if you're throwing two-handed, let's say in a four-point, we're just gonna say a four-point Florentine, and you reverse your grip and hold one up and grasp one with a handshake hold, then you're going to have a leading tail and a trailing tail, or that sensation. Okay, just a little bit different variation, nothing dramatic. Could we throw Florentine with both trailing tails? Sure, and you're going to want to practice that some too, because the ultimate goal is not only going to be able to throw a double-ended flogger like this that has a leading tail and a trailing tail, and that would look, see if I can get these going, that would look something like that. You have a leading tail and a trailing tail. Uh, but then in a future video, we'll do this, because I'm still practicing myself, but the ultimate goal is to take two double-end floggers, or four tails, and have two leading tails and two trailing tails, and do a four-count Florentine and ultimately a six-count Florentine. Well, one of the ways to get there is to practice with this handhold so you have that, that feeling of a trailing, a trailing tail, okay? So we gotta get some muscle memory going with that. I throw that in because today we were just talking about variations of, of grips. Um, I haven't seen people throwing their flogger using the hanging loop, but certainly this is a wrist loop if you have carpal tunnel and you have problems with your grip. Uh, it's there not just to hang the flogger, but to put your wrist through. So when you're throwing for long periods of time, if you lose your grip, the flogger doesn't go flying off across the room. So that's a little bit more today on floggers. Floggers are supposed to be fun. You can make them fun just by changing up your grip a little bit uh, and doing different patterns with your flogger as you play. As always, thanks for watching Whips in the Dungeon.